Germany's wild attack becomes more savage every hour. Down swoop their bombers on undefended towns, down upon women and children. From houses burning and houses wrecked, the march of the refugees continues. Here is one mother and her child, leaving a house in northern France that has just been set on fire by a German incendiary bomb. And she is only one of tens of thousands, fleeing before the horror of the mad beast of Europe. Tens of thousands fleeing before the horror of the mad beast of Europe. Some of them are so worn out, they can no longer continue. We and our allies know well the challenge we are facing. We know that we are fighting to stop the march of destruction. Here in northern France is a maternity hospital, deliberately destroyed by the German Air Force. Here is the mark of Hitler the Hun. This is why Gamelin asks each soldier to die rather than give way. Why Churchill speaks of blood and toil and tears and sweat. Why Renault tells France, our lives count for nothing. Through a situation that is changing every hour, as we of Pathé Gazette try to bring you the truth without fear, we know that we are watching the greatest battle in the history of the world. What can we at home do while it still rages? It is in our factories and our homes that we must support the men at the front. They fight gallantly. They show ten times the courage of the enemy. But without tanks and planes and guns, which we must make and pay for, all their courage is of no avail. They must have more and more of the weapons they use so well. They let nothing fall into enemy hands. Here is one of the Belgian bridges blown up to stem the German advance. So great is the explosion that even here you can see the pieces falling in front of the camera. Our cameraman and every other is risking his life to bring you the news. Belgian troops return from the front, worn out by the struggle. Our men have taken their place. They will contest every inch. Remember the words of Haig in 1918. With our backs to the wall, believing in the justice of our cause, each one of us must fight on to the end. Remember that was in April 1918. And by November of the same year, the war was won. So our spirit must be courage, energy and faith. And welcome back everybody to July of 1939. And we are in turn seven for Operation Crimson Tide. And we're going to see if we can bring an end to this war in Argentina. And on top of that, we're also going to see if we can retake our capital, Nanking, for the KMT. Yes, one of many things we're going to have some fun with this turn. Hopefully we'll be able to do those things and a few more. But nonetheless, we will start rolling our tech rolls. And here are our tech roll choices. Now, I missed a tech roll last turn because I forgot I upgraded a factory uh, the prior turn, but nonetheless, we're just gonna add them all. They're all different, so we're not gonna get any double dipping here. And here are all the number values assigned to everything. So we're, we are able to go into our third phase of tech this round, and we're gonna see what we can get. So let's roll that, get it out of the way first. All yeah, right, so we do have strategic rockets for once on the board. That's nice. We have improved factories, which is also nice. Looks like we got, I think that's heavy bombers as well. Well, 50% is not bad at all. So number five, let's just see here. That is heavy bombers. So that is good. Just double check that. Hmm, I'll put a seven down there for that. Obviously I'm wrong. I have those swapped, but nonetheless, I guess this should have been a nine. We'll go with the color of the dice because that's the only fairest option. But yeah, sorry about that, guys. But uh, yeah, anyways, it doesn't really matter. So we got heavy bombers, strategic, and, uh, and improved factories. So let's move those guys up here. Improved factories to first stage. 
heavy bombers to our third stage and strategic rockets to get on the board for our first stage. So there we go, guys. And finally, increasing our production a little bit more, but still far behind a certain European power. We won't mention any names. Uh, so that is done. Now, just pan over here. We are going to pay $2 to the damn Germans for having to spy down there in South America. We have 12 bucks that we're spending. We're gonna spend seven of it lend leasing an American-built Johnson destroyer to uh, the east, so east side of England, where their whole fleet is, I guess in Cornwall, perhaps. Um, in C Zone 24 there. We're gonna build a Marine for the Brazilians, um, and then we're gonna send a supply token or some lovely supplies to China because they need them more than anything. And that will complete our 12 bucks. Seven, four, and one um, is well 12. So that is our, that is what we're spending this turn. So let's see what we can do here. What do you wanna do? China first? Or Brazil. Let's do Brazil first. We got everything set up there. So just a quick review. What we have here, and I'll move these ships into the combat zone. But we have our coastal ship he is going to come in for a bombard shot. Might as well. He can't blockade this turn since they're doing this. So if this is a failed strike, they will be able to lend lease next turn. But nonetheless, we're going to do it just for fun. Might get lucky. We might not. We're gonna bring in our fighter and our two infantry here from the south, two infantry and the artillery supported in from the north, as well as uh, the Marines. So it's a three-pronged attack. So we're gonna have three infantry, one infantry supported by artillery, one artillery, one fighter and a Marine against his two militia and two infantry and his fighter in Argentina. So we have everything set up here. Um, we have our amphibious assaults, and I'll just go everything just so you guys see what it is. This is our coastal defense ship, three or less. Our fighter at six, and his fighter at six. Um, this is the Brazilians, this is the Argentinians. Um, so we have air superiority, we gotta do that first round. Uh, we have the artillery at three, which is purple. We have the infantry, the support of artillery, which is three. Because uh, there's no modifiers except for the city, which they're all moving up one, defending the city. Our infantry are attacking at a two because, once again, I don't think we are in jungle. This is just open plains, it seems. Um, and then we have one Marine at two. And I'll have to take the Marine, uh, if we do get a hit first round, as part of the double casualties. Uh, so, yeah, that should be it, guys. So, shall we roll? Can we do roll both rolls on both sides? Let's just see. Let's do that. Let's see if we can do this and not make a mess of it. Alright. Okay, so we have our coastal defense ship, which is clearly a miss. So we'll get rid of those pink dice. We have a hit on our fighter on our side, but no hit on his fighter on his side. So that fighter is going to get taken off. Uh, he will, um, yes, he will get a defensive roll. But the fighter, uh, the hit has to be taken on the fighter. Um, now, as far as we do have one hit with our artillery, which is first strike. Now, I probably should have rolled that first rather than rolling it. But because I didn't, it doesn't matter now because of the simple fact that I'm not going to re-roll this for him. But he did get a hit on me. Um, so we got a total of two hits this round. And he has a total of, it looks like, two hits as well. He got one hit on his militia and one hit on his infantry, uh, and that is it. So it looks like two for two, but um, yeah, so his fighter is going to be gone, and, um, uh, and obviously he has to take one militia off as a casualty, and I have to take two units off as well, and I think I'll just take, uh, well, sorry, I have to take the Marine, obviously, and then I have to take one of the infantry which is pretty, pretty simple. So there we go. Okay, so now we have two infantry. We have our artillery, our, uh, we have our infantry boosted by that. And we have um, our fighter and that's all good. We take our Marine off. 
So we should have five units left and he should have three, which is correct. Okay, so let's roll this out again. Okay, so no hit on the militia. He does get one hit on the infantry and we get, looks like we got a hit on the boosted infantry. We also got a hit on the infantry and we got a hit on the fighter. So he is done and he got uh, just one hit. It looks like just want to double check everything, make sure everything's good. Yes. So I will take off obviously another infantry, which will be just this guy here as one casualty and we hit him three times. So that is, that is it guys. Hopefully that should be correct. Um, so we will take uh, Buenos Aires uh, with our fighter, which we can't land, but that doesn't really make a difference. We have our artillery, um, we have two infantry, and that's it. So let's just do this right now. We'll take the fighter off, infantry off. Argentinian Randall. We'll take our casualties off, which we lost three units in the battle, which is probably about to be expected. We have our Brazilian Randall going on in Buenos Aires. And the Brazilians have now officially won the war. Now this plane was already here. You can go one, two, three, four, land in Rio de Janeiro. Why not, right? Now, as per minor rules, if you look at the Spanish Civil War, they got to relocate their, their forces. So we might be able to relocate our forces too, depending on how it goes. Um, but for now, we'll have to talk to the designer about that and just see how this is resolved. Now normally, um, I shouldn't say normally, but you could potentially roll a recruitment roll for your final turn, but I don't think you get to, because here in Spain, you don't. But just for fun, I'm gonna roll one anyways. I need a seven or less. I'm not gonna put it on the board because if I do get it, I'll put it on later. Uh, we got 11, so we missed it anyways, but I don't think we get to roll a recruitment roll since the war is resolved. So more than likely that doesn't really make a difference. We do have a lend lease still going down here and it'll, it'll go down to Buenos Aires, um, where it was originally gonna go. Um, speaking of which, talking about lend lease, the supplies from New York will end up going through here, through the Suez Canal, down here into, um, into the Burma Road and going into Yunnan. Just if I hadn't mentioned that or made that clearly, I'll mention that now. So there we go, the war is over. Now we also have, at the end of this turn, we're going to roll our Brazilian um, random, or not Brazilian, our South American random events roll and see what happens with that as well. But we'll get to that at the end. Uh, for suspense. But over here in China, we have our attack. We have our seven infantry, our cavalry, our elite infantry um, going into Nanking. Now, I could bring the infantry in Shantung, but I'll keep them there just to, just to make sure we have, a, have something defending in Shantung. But we'll see what happens, right? This is probably a very risky battle, but if we get some luck, well, it'll be fun. In the city, we have four, sorry, five infantry defending at four. Well, they're actually going to be defending at five, moving up because they're in a city, and same with the militia, the one militia. So this is going to be the Japanese. These white dice are the infantry attacking into two, because since there is no modifier, there's no river or something I can see from the south. Um, and uh, we have our, um, our elite infantry, and our cavalry in red, and our fighters, uh, which are the green dice. So, let's roll here. Now, there's no first strikes, so we should be okay this time. And we seem to forget that, but nonetheless, we're gonna do it. And, ba-boom. So, what do we got here? So, we're pretty fortunate. We actually have zero hits right here with the infantry, so that's nice, but they do have a hit on their militia, which is a two. Here, we're attacking with our white dice, so we're looking for two or less. We got nothing on the white dice. We do have a hit with our cavalry, and we do have a hit with one fighter, 
And I think that's about it for that round. Yeah, that's it. So not very great odds. Now there are some retreats here though. We actually have three retreats right here. So I gotta keep in mind of those. So we're gonna retreat three of those units. Um, I'm gonna take three of those off right now. I'm gonna move, well, there will be three infantry going back, but I'm just going to make a count of that as a retreat, just so we know. Darn retreats, they always bugger things up, right? So we have three of those, um, and then we also have to take a unit off. And we're gonna take off, obviously, an infantry as part of the Deadpool, but he has to take two units off, so he'll probably take off his militia and an infantry. So are we gonna go again? Absolutely, we're gonna go in. We're gonna have some fun, because that's what this game is all about, guys. I don't know what the dice are gonna give us, good or bad. Okay, so it looks like this round, he had a little bit better luck with the infantry. He got two hits. We got one more hit with our fighter. We do have a hit with our supported elite infantry. And now this dice is cocked, but we have a, a, a method of doing this, and I'll see if this even works. We can put a dice here, and it can stay, and it fell over. So what we'll do here is we're gonna roll this dice again. So we have two hits already. We're gonna roll this dice, and we'll just move this stuff here. So we have two for two. Just confirm this one, and that's a four. So that's a miss. Too bad, because it would have been a hit, but we got two for two. Oh crap, I forgot to realize if there was any, any units there that retreated. Darn. Uh, you know what? I'll just, because uh, that is important. Um, you know what, guys, if you trust me, I'm just going to pause, go back, and take a look at it. Because I want to make sure that this battle is correct. But just so we know, there is two more infantry regardless going off the battle, as well as two more, um, two more Chinese infantry. So two and two are gone. So we should have a remainder of three left or two left, two Japanese troops left. And two more infantry off. Okay, so I'm just gonna pause the video right now, quickly just check. I really hate doing that, but I wanna make sure that this is okay. Okay, well that, well sorry guys, well that was a waste, I apologize. It didn't look like there was any retreats. So for our third round of combat, we should now have two remaining Japanese infantry, two fighters, one infantry left, one infantry support, or one elite infantry, and one cavalry. Uh, and that should be it. So let's roll this final round one way or another. This is probably gonna be the end of the battle. It may not be the greatest victory or defeat, but we'll see. And let's roll it. So we have one hit with our fighter. We do have one hit with our infantry. That's all we need. And he has a six and a seven. This dice is slightly cocked, but it's more towards the six. Once again, I'll, I'll rest a die on there. And it does hold, so I think we're pretty safe. This one's cocked, but we already got two hits. We don't need to roll again, so we should have, um, we should have victory here. So no casualties here. Um, now the thing is, this is our cavalry, and this is cocked, because it could mean a retreat, so I probably should roll this regardless. And I'll just roll it here. So that's a one, so that's another hit. So just in case you guys can see it. So there should be no retreats with that. So we take the city of Nanking with, I wouldn't say great casualties, but heavy casualties. Um, and we're gonna take it with one elite troop, one infantry, one cavalry. If my math is correct. Um, and I'm not actually very happy with that battle, nonetheless. Once again, I apologize for pausing. I just didn't know what the best option is moving forward with that. So we are going to take it now with one cavalry, one elite unit, and these two militia are in Yunnan. Just want to make sure that that's right. Now we have our fighters, which we're going to fly back. Just move this a little bit closer so we see it. Move our fighters that we have throw back. We had three retreats, so these guys go back into here. 
uh, into Hunan. Um, and then I need one more infantry unit because I chipped those out. And then we're going to have a ch infantry right here. And we'll put a Chinese rondel on it. And I believe Nanking is worth two. Just double check. It is. Take that Japanese militia off. And we'll put this right here. Tight space, but I'm sure you guys all, all can see it. So... Yeah, I mean, it was a victory. I was hoping for better luck than that. But nonetheless, it is important to get rid of those infantry while we can. I think for the most part, we were fortunate with some of the dice rolls, especially with that first round with the infantry all rolling higher. But, uh, but nonetheless, uh, I mean, I, I, I can't complain. I probably really can't complain. So that's going to bring Japan down to, we have to move our fighters back. And where are we going to move our fighters back? We, uh, we can go three spaces from there. So we can go one, two. Yeah, it doesn't really matter where we go. It's not great spots here and here. Yeah, I think that's going to be our best spot. By the way, guys, I forgot to mention what I'm building for China. Um, is that there's going to, I have $10 saved, so it's going to be five militia going, sprouting out through various places. So they're all going to be chipped. Um, but that is it right there. So China, believe it or not, I believe goes up to 10 and Japan goes down. I'm not sure if they're 25 or not, but let's just call it 23. I know rank will have a better, better progress on that. Um, once again, this is my one marking Mexico here. Um, now Brazil doesn't affect it, even though I've won the war and there were $6, we're not going to be putting Brazil up because it's a separate entity, a separate war. We've already talked with the designer about that. Uh, so yeah, I think that's everything for now. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, non, non, Non-combat movements. Sorry guys, just a lot going on obviously, but nonetheless. This fighter that we got from Mexico, uh, since I can move land units and ground units, um, this fighter is gonna go land on the carrier this turn, this turn around, and that'll be done for that. And uh, I can't move the ships, all my ships are locked. I could move my land units, I think, but I'm gonna leave these units down here just because for now. Um, I might want them down there. So that is no big deal. Um, once again, Brazil is resolved. And while we're doing that, even though I'm not done my non-combat movements, I'm just gonna put my Len Lease down there, one Marine, which is already a done deal. Uh, we're gonna put our ship here, along with this lovely British fleet. Len Lease here from New York over to, uh, I wanna say Liverpool, but, Really, Liverpool's up here. Cornwall, Kent, I don't know, something like that. And then we have our other supply token for the KMT. Now, I believe the American and USA turns happen together, so I can't use this token this turn. However, I can use the other token that was lend lease to me to upgrade one of these militia to an infantry. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right here in Yunnan. And of course, I'll have another unit for next turn. Um, and yes, these fighting planes went back to Quang Tung. Do I want to put them in Quang Tung? Quang Tung is a very valuable spot and he's got a lot on the go right now. You know what? I think I will put them in Quang Tung. I think I will put them both in Quang Tung. And what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to put my militia down. So we're going to put five militia, we have $10 to spend. We're going to put two up here, I believe in Sheswan. Right there to bolster those defenses. We're going to put one here in Hunan. And then we're gonna put the two, the remaining two down here in Quang Tung. 
may not be the greatest strategy, but at the same token, you can't protect everything. And one of the victims of Chinese success right now is, I mean, if you call it success, I call it luck to a big, to big degree too, is um, what do you do? Where do you go, right? Um, and, and that's the thing right now. It's, it's hard, to, hard to really do a lot with your units. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna move my anti-aircraft gun, if you guys permit me. It's a non-combat movement up into Sheshuan even though I've placed my units, but I think that's done. I'm happy with that. Um, so now our income, we still have the opium from Sheshuan, and we have right now um, $10, um, plus the two bonuses, the opium from Sheshuan uh, and the Burma Road. So we're gonna have an extra $2, so we're gonna have $12 next turn to spend. And we'll see. Uh, see what happens there and we have also a supply token in Yunnan now of course if I can do something with this supply token this turn I would upgrade the militia but I don't think I can because I think once again the KMT and the USA go at the same time it just has arrived um, during this turn and I believe that's it guys the Americans um, or the Brazilians rather have won the war here in Buenos Aires and now are occupying it and teaching those Argentinians that they're very, very bad. Um, but of course, we have that darn spy in Chile right now, which might have to be resolved um, at a later date. But once again, I don't think there's a recruitment rule because of that, because it's resolved right at the end. Um, but I could be wrong. That's something, once again, we'll have to talk with the designer. But really, it doesn't make a difference because we already rolled for that. Um, aside from that, guys, I think I've done everything except our random events roll. Let's go over here. Can I have a drink? I'm gonna take this off the rack. This is where I have kind of the expansions hung. And over here, all my reference sheets. So it's definitely helpful, that is for sure. Okay, and Let's just go to our random events roll. Get ready for this. We'll just grab a random dice. Since South America is mostly green, let's pick a green die, shall we? And see what we got. Let's see what happens. We got a three. Oh boy, another Soviet coup. A Soviet coup. Where? Will this Soviet coup be? We'll be in Venezuela again. Let's uh, let's do this again. Um, it's kind of lame that it's a Soviet coup. Would have been nice to something different, but nonetheless, there's a few things off the board here. Just want to make it. Venezuela is right now in the Soviet camp. So if we do roll a 12, uh, Venezuela becomes Soviet. But uh, Peru is off, so there will be no 10. There will be no three, and obviously no one. So we got a nine. Paraguay. Oh boy. Didn't think I'd be using a lot of these, but we have a Soviet coup, coup in Paraguay, which I believe is up here. Paraguay, guys. Look at that. Soviets are popping up all over. They must uh, want to be follow the line of Lenin's Marxism or something like that, but there we go. So two Soviet coups back to back more or less one in Paraguay and one in Venezuela It's not good for either faction the, the Axis or the Allies, but nonetheless there it is more so for the Allies um, Okay guys, that's it and we are done um, Yeah, pass it on now to General Hand Grenade to his uh, turn for 8.1 and we'll see what the Germans have in store here. Um, there is Marines, there's a heavy Luftwaffe presence. Who knows what's going to happen? Will they be going after the United Kingdom? Or going after the Russians? Or some poor neutral? We will see. Okay guys, stay classy, and we will talk to you guys soon. Um, just a final note too, the American income is at 16 bucks, and that's what we will be collecting this turn or should be collecting we didn't save any dollars and we will talk to you guys later cheers